Good evening. It's seven o'clock. I'm going to call the meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Um, our first item of business before we take a recess, the Pledge of Allegiance, and I would recognize the Deputy First Selectman to lead us in that. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Madam. Uh, all members of the Board of Selectmen are present. I'd now ask for a motion to recess the Board of Selectmen's meeting so we can convene the public hearing. Selectman Nordell, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. We are in recess. I will now convene the public hearing that was noticed. Um, and I'll read the, the notice of the public hearing. In accordance with the Town of East Windsor Ordinance 20-1, Section 7, the Board of Selectmen shall hold a budget public hearing on Thursday, March 4th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The boards encourage comments from the public on the Town of East Windsor Broadbrook Fire Department 2021-2022 budget. So what we're going to do is uh, hold that public hearing in conformance with the recently adopted ordinance. And I would first recognize Chairman Matt and representatives from the Broadbrook. Yeah, Oh, run. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Yep, there you go. <clears throat> Good evening, citizens of East Windsor. In November 2020, at the annual election, the people voted in a and a separate taxing entity for the town of East Windsor, Broadbrook Fire Department, and corresponding fire commission was formed. We have worked over the past weeks on a budget that is feasible and represents what we believe the best option for fire protection emergency medical services, and overall emergency services. We are here to present the budget for the fiscal year 2021 to 2022. The highlights of this new budget are, total budget for the new year is $957,327. This is the first budget that the newly formed and separate taxing entity has developed. And I would like to explain what is in this budget. Items that were previously covered directly by the town's budget include $123,201 for items like the fire marshal expenses, the FICA workman's comp uh, for the part-time employees and the Catalan County dispatch fees. These amounts are expected to be, be reduced from the town budget as they were have been added to the Broadbrook district's budget. Additionally, the capital improvement budget was handled directly by the town. As a consequence of being a separate taxing entity, it is appropriate that we establish a reasonable budget to cover the costs of maintaining significant fire and emergency services equipment. For that, we have added 200,000. This will establish on an ongoing basis, a process for apparatus and equipment replacement. The people of Broadbrook deserve equipment that responds appropriately and in accordance with prescribed times for replacement, which is the National Fire Protection Association. Additionally, this is fiscally responsible as it avoids having to pay significant costs for repairs as the apparatus grow in service age. Without the ability to bond for a new truck, adding this amount into the budget every year puts the department on a regular schedule to replace outdated fire apparatus with a scheduled purchase on a, on a five-year basis. With three main apparatus, this gives us an approximate life cycle of 15 years per engine, which is well worth the investment in forethought. Regarding personnel, it should be noted that the Broadbrook Fire Department has traditionally been a volunteer organization. Frankly speaking, times have changed recently and with call volumes averaging 700 calls annually and with many people working outside of the community, that strictly volunteer model is not sustainable to provide adequate personnel for emergency response. 
As a result, the Broadbrook Fire Department has been employing part-time personnel to supplement the volunteer staff with very good results. There are currently three part-time firefighters that provide station coverage during the day, five days a week, and two part-time firefighters that provide station coverage on the weekend evenings. The benefits of this coverage are reduced, <clears throat> have reduced response times to emergencies and consistency in maintaining apparatus and equipment following the emergencies. To ad adequately maintain this model, we recommend an expansion of the coverage to four part-time personnel during the day <clears throat> and two personnel during the evening, seven days a week. This additional cost is $167,400. $96. This expanded program will provide a valuable service to our town and community. <clears throat> At this point, I'm going to turn it over to the Assistant Chairman, Nick Mixada. We'll carry on from here. Thank you, Chairman Madigan. I would like to point out foremost that this budget that we have reviewed and are presenting today represents what we feel is necessary to establish the Broadbrook Fire Department appropriately up for success in delivering the full range of emergency services. As this is the first budget that has ever stood alone from the town's budget, I am secure in the belief that this provides the coverage that I would personally expect as a resident, a husband, and a father. When the fire department responds to a call for a cardiac arrest, a car accident, or a structure fire, the residents should reasonably expect excellence. With times and costs increasing, this budget represents appropriately what meets those demands. It should be noted that this budget will cost the average taxpayer less than $5 mm -hmm. per week. For first rate emergency services, we believe that is a very good deal and that this budget establishes this model for long-term success. As a, for instance, today, we had a car accident involving with injuries. Imagine that you were in that car, or if at the same time, your wife, your mother, your husband, or your child had a medical emergency on the other side of the district. This budget best positions us for that inevitability. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to the fire chief, Tom Arcari. Good evening, everyone. Anyone have any questions so far? One thing I would just like to add to this, to the, uh, what the commissioner said, that 95% of our volunteers, members, are all taxpayers in this town, in the Broadbrook section. So um, we're feeling this just as everybody else is. I, I have nothing else to say. <clears throat> Chairman Madigan, anything further? Uh, no, we're, we're opening up. If there's any questions anyone would like to ask, we're available to answer. So this is, this is a duly noticed public hearing. Uh, if there are any members of the public who would wish to address the board, um, kindly unmute yourself, give your name and your address for the record, and then state your business. I'll give people a moment to unmute. Any questions or comments from members of the public? Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, I'd now ask a member of the Board of Selectmen to make a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Marie, Sarah, so this, oh, go ahead, Marie. No, go ahead, sir. Um, I'll move that we adjourn the public hearing. Is there a second? Marie, this is all second that. All in favor of adjournment, Selectman Baker? Aye. Selectman Nordell? Aye. Selectman D'Souza? Aye. Selectman Musco? Aye. We are adjourned at 7.09 p.m. Um, I'll now reconvene the meeting of the Board of Selectmen. We'll take up agenda item four, uh, which 4A, which is approval of the February 4th, 2021 regular meeting minutes. You should have been included in your packets. Um, so if, are there any, uh, is there any discussion or corrections? I make a motion that we accept the uh, minutes of February 4th, 2021 as presented. Is there a second? Sarah Muska, select men, I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Minutes are adopted. 
February 8th. Marie D'Souza will make a motion to accept uh, special meeting minutes of Monday, February 8th, 2021 as presented. Is there a second? Selectman Nordell will second that motion. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion or correction? Seeing none, Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. And if you're adopted. Finally, workshop minutes. Marie D'Souza will make a motion to accept the minutes of Tuesday, February 16th, uh, regular budget public hearing. Um, that's it. That's present. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any corrections? Seeing none, Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Okay. We're now on to public participation. This is one of two opportunities on our regular meeting agenda for the public to address the board. Are there any are there any comments from members of the public? If so, kindly unmute yourself, state your name and address, and area of business with the board. Jason, Noreen Farmer, 247 South Water Street. Um, two things. Uh, the first one, I missed the last budget meeting. Um, and the video is not posted online. Um, I wanted to catch up on it, but um, it's not posted and there's no minutes to it yet. I was just wondering if that would get posted. Yeah, I, I thought I was up to date on that. I'll, I'll catch up tomorrow. Okay, thank you. And then the other part is... <laughs> from my personal perspective, uh, looking at budgets, um, from looking at what I've seen, the grand list has grown, um, which is always a wonderful thing that our grand list grows. Um, and I think a lot of it is proportionate to some commercial development. And um, there's a few things that will be coming online next year between the um, Route 5 development and my concern with increased revenue is that a lot of times it gets looked at as um, a way to not increase taxes, which is always a good thing. But I think if we're going to be going forward this year, next year, the year after, putting in a lot more commercial development, I'm hoping that perhaps it can be looked at as an addition to the town so that we can perhaps start putting things in place that we've been long ignoring, uh, infrastructure wise, park and recreation, things for our community to be able to be able to go to nice parks and have good equipment and um, have programming for our kids, our seniors, for everybody. Um, commercial development is a great thing and if we're going to go down that road, I think it's important to look at it from how can we use that to bring us up rather than to just keep budgets as low as possible and never use that money to, to enhance our community. Thanks. Thank you, Madam. Uh, are there any other comments from the public? Would anyone else from the public like to address the board? Seeing none, there will be another opportunity later in the meeting for uh, the board to hear public comments. We'll move on to communications, and I don't think there are any. Jason? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Um, uh, point of privilege, um, I have an added agenda item. Okay. I like I, I like to add agenda item um, to 9H um, uh, for uh, 12 South Main Street. Invite um, concerning the easement. Yep. Uh, is there a second? <laughs> Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor of adding agenda item nine each to the agenda? Uh, Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. 
Thank you, uh, Deputy First Selectman. Okay. Um, we're on to resignations. We have two. One is from Mr. Leach from the Diversity Council. He submitted a letter received in my office on the 23rd. Uh, is there a motion to accept the resignation? Selectman Nordell will move to accept the resignation of Robert Leach with regret from the Diversity Council. Is there a second? Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Lefka? Aye. Selectman Baker? Aye. Selectman Nordell? Aye. Selectman Nordell would move to accept the resignation of Frank Gowdy as an alternate member from the zoning board. Second. So uh, this is a resignation as an alternate member. He also is seeking appointment as a full member. So um, we appreciate him stepping up again. Uh, he uh, had been a member, a full member for many years and took a step back and is willing to step forward again. The question is on acceptance of the resignation as an alternate member. Uh, any discussion? Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. So carried. And anybody mind if we take the next two together? Good with me. Um, make a motion to uh, reappoint Francis Neal to the Conservation Commission, regular member for a term expiring April 1, 2025, and Kurt Kebschel, Conservation Commission, regular member for a term expiring April 1, 2025. Is there a second? Selectman Nordell will second. It's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Make a motion to reappoint uh, Maria Weldon to North Central Health District Committee member for expen a term expiring April 1, 2024. Maria D'Souza will second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Selectman uh, D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. So carried. New appointments. Motion Sarah to Muska. Go ahead, Alan. Okay. Um, make a motion to appoint Ian Neal to the American Heritage River Commission. Uh, it's a correction for meeting from January 21, 2021 from a regular member to an alternate for a term expiring November 1, 2024. There is no regular member vacancy. That's Second. Right. Motion is seconded. Discussion? Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muskell. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Nordell will move to appoint Frank Gowdy for the planning and zoning as a regular member for a term expiring November 1st, 2024. Second. So for the record, uh, that was an appoint a move to appoint Frank Gowdy as a regular member for a term expiring November 1, 2024. Charlie, you had some uh, feedback or static or something. Maybe your mic got jostled a bit, but there was something happening there. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Guys, I, I told you, this is going to be a fast meeting tonight. We're moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to move on. Put on. What's that? I said the brakes are going to get put on. <laughs> Just so you know, that's going to be a, a, a running gag from now on, is it's going to be a short meeting tonight. Um, so we're gonna move on to agenda item 9A. Uh, we're gonna complete our budget workshops. Um, and the last commission to present to us is the Capital Improvement Planning Commission. Um, is Kathy Simonelli with us? I'm here, sorry, it would not unmute for some reason. Good evening. Good evening. How are you guys? 
Thank you. Good. So that I was not able to make the rescheduled meeting. Um, had another meeting that night, but um, I sent you guys our request back in December. I don't know how much detail you want to discuss at this point. If you want me to walk through the highlights, the projects as a list. Whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, well, let me recap a little bit um, of what we put in the letter. Um, so we submitted a request for a total of $1,450,774. Um, and we, while we recognize that that's above a 2% increase, it still represents only about 70% of the cost of the submitted projects and doesn't even consider those that require bonding. And that's the submitted projects for this year. Um, it does provide partial funding for all of the reprojects that require annual monies to be spent, um, police vehicles, et cetera. And there is some money there, partial money for a number of other important projects, including equipment that's mandated or necessary for our public safety departments to do their jobs effectively and safely. We did include um, the Broadbrook Fire Department projects in this SIP year. Um, and as part of our request, because at that time that we were planning all of this, it was not clear where the Broadbrook Fire Department situation would end up. Um, so obviously that is subject, I guess, for you guys to figure out how that lands um, in terms of them funding themselves or through their tax or through the CIP budget. But we also have a number of projects this year that can't be accommodated within the funding that's typically available in the SIP budget. And we believe that they need bonding to accomplish. There's a number of school building projects, um, replacement of the high school roof, which has been on the list for years now, the replacement and abatement of the Broadbrook school gym ceiling also on the list for years and other projects related to the schools. The pumper truck replacement for the Broadbrook fire department is on there. There, replacement of the DPW and Broadbrook Fire Department roofs, and actually some additional road maintenance to bring more of our roads out of disrepair, try to get us back on a normal maintenance schedule. It's worth noting that the annual request for road maintenance is typically about a million dollars a year, but funding has been limited to no more than half of that request in recent years. Um, so our major projects, let's see, our major, projects are currently estimated at a total of $11,215,300. And many of them have been on the waiting list for far too many years. And we risk having project costs increase significantly both from inflation and continued deterioration facilities if we don't start to make some, shall we say forward progress on some of these. Um, down to the specific projects, um, the first uh, table that I provided is the ones that we are recommending receive funding for the police vehicles. They were cut short last year, did not get their two and a half vehicles. So to get them back on their schedule of two and a half vehicles a year, we put in enough funds for three full vehicles um, in this CIP. I think it, at this money, I'm not 100% sure that they will actually be 100% covered. The police department may actually have to put a little bit more in there to cover all three only because the costs are, are rising and they're still kind of feeling out how to deal with the change in the vehicles that are available um, since their old sedans are no longer made. Um, we put in the standard 75,000 for the chip ceiling, which is done every year so that it can be reimbursed by the state's low SIP program. Um, we put in 500,000 of the requested 1 million for pavement management. Um, 200,000 for public works vehicles. This is kind of funds ongoing replacement of public works and parks and rec and grounds vehicles and equipment. Um, Trying to remember, it's been a while since I looked at this. Um, I think the last pur purchase was a used GMC small six wheel dump truck. And their next purchase they are trying to work up to is a full size six wheel dump and plow truck. So that is what this would be going towards. Um, 
the GIS system, which we need to fund to get that back up to, well, to get it to um, where it's supposed to be by state mandate. So there are updates um, that are mandated that we have not yet been able to fund and get done. Um, we're past due. Um, those man, the ones, the mandated items are estimated to cost to about 70K. Uh, we gave them 50 for this year. Um, they need to locate and map storm drainage systems. They need to map the location of every street sign. Um, those are the two key items that are now um, past due on the state mandate list, but there are additional things that need to be added. And all of that would help us in our um, developing more commercial um, and, and real estate needs to have that system up to date. Um, in town-wide drainage programs, we've had a number of drainage issues in the town. Um, Lenny and crew have been hitting those as the highest priorities first. Um, we submitted 75,000 towards the 100,000 that they requested. Um, their priority sites are Wapping, Rockville, Barber Hill, and Bridal Path, or at least they were at the time that we wrote this up. I don't know if things have changed because sometimes things break and they have to get to them a little sooner than this money rolls around. But there are numerous drainage issues across town and that just hits the top, top on the office. Um, the state mandated revaluation that is required every five years is coming next year. So we absolutely have to fund that at $40,000 to ensure that they have enough money to complete that revaluation next year. And then the town property vehicle replacement program. Again, we try, try to put some money away each, each year so that when grants become available, for, we have the matching funds that we need. I um, mean, at this point, uh, I think they're looking and they need a new 20 passenger bus and a car for small trips um, for next year is what they're hoping to start to save money towards. So that's the $1,174,577 that we need for the annual projects. Those are just the projects that need money continuously every year. Um, we also recommended $60,000 towards the Broadbrook Fire Department bunker gear. Again, this is mandated replacement of gear that's already past its end of life. Um, the NFPA standards require that that gear be replaced at least every 10 years. 45,000 covers turnout coats, bunker pants, and hoods for 15 personnel at 300,000, at 3,000 each. 300, um, the boots and the helmets and the gloves were getting paid from the operating budget. Um, we had originally started trying to do 45,000 per year, but we shorted it a little last year to make something else work. So we're trying to get them back on their schedule of 45,000 per year by pushing that up to 60,000 this year. The dog pound, another facility that has been long neglected in town um, in which the town pretty handily voted that they wanted it kept and, and I think that means they wanted it cleaned up and, uh, and improved. But we put 30,000 towards that so we can start to make some headway towards all of the needs of that facility. It needs major work both in and out. So right now it's kind of grandfathered, but we do need to show the inspector that we're trying to improve the facility and we have not done a good job of that in recent years. The assessor's office, um, in addition to the reval, they are also asking for conversion to a different software package, Vision 8 Camera software. Um, this is computer assisted mass appraisal software. And it is apparently much more user-friendly, not being an assessor, I can't speak for it, but she did quite eloquently. Um, <laughs> it's much more user-friendly. It will increase accuracy, increase efficiency, um, they feel like the current software that we're using is, is not terribly user-friendly. It's not, it's common, so it's hard to find people who also already have some not the software that they're a, a number of towns and they feel it, uh, it's easier to learn and easier to use and ultimately more accurate. Um, they would like to get this in this year 
such that it be used for this year's revaluation. Um, uh, they don't want to get started with a reval process and then try to put it in later. They'd like it um, to go to go first and then move to that. So apparently the vendor has agreed to accept funding in two installments, but allow them to get it right away. So we put in $23,500 for the first half of that. That would require the remainder of that be um, committed next year. Sidewalks, constant thing that needs to be maintained and repaired. Um, $30,000 was put aside for that out of the 250 that was requested. Um, they're needed throughout town. This is just to help try to keep things moving in a positive direction. Um, we put $20,000 in for DPW facility equipment. Again, this is stuff they use to service the garage and for maintenance of the town facilities. The Board of Ed, 41,957 to replace the 25 plus year old carpet. This project has been on the list for a number of years and I've been saying 25 plus year old carpet for a while. So it might even be 30 plus now. Um, Parks and Rec playground equipment um, replacement. Again, this is something we have tried to fund in the past or not always able to maintain the money in the budget, but this would begin to chip away at uh, many of the playgrounds that need to be brought up to code or have repairs done. And that was 30,000. We also have a Parks and Rec request for a master plan. And this would be a study to develop um, a plan for all the, the town park and rec facilities. Um, we strongly support this. We'd like to see this happen um, sooner rather than later because we feel that having a good picture of what should be done will help make sure that we are spending our money in the most appropriate and wise ways um, possible. Um, so the funding for that, that we was half of it at 20,600. Um, and that's again, something that's been on the list for a couple of years. Last in this group is the police department was looking for some electronic speed signs. I'm not sure if this was one sign or two, but this cost includes three years of traffic cloud, which allows remote monitoring and message adjustments. And that's 20,140. So this 276 and change added to the annual projects gets us to the 1,450,774 request that we made. Um, if you look further down, you'll see the projects recommended for bond. Um, we have in the past, this year, we kind of changed this a little bit in that we wanted the board to have a bigger picture of all of the projects that are really on the bonding list, not just the ones that rose to the very, very, very top and have been sitting for many years trying to get funded. But to give you a clearer picture of what the backlog of that looks like, we put all of the projects that likely require bonding into this section. Um, and there's a lot of them. And a lot of them have been on the list for a very long time. It's just that we can't get the ones at the top of the list crossed off. So we never get to move down the list and look at the others. And the total of those bonding projects is 10,365,300. And the last table that we put in are some projects that we did not recommend for funding at this time, not to say they aren't worthwhile, but, um, but we realize we're probably not gonna get what we asked for already. So um, there's field expansion and renovation for parks and rec. Part of that will come out of the master plan. Part of the reason we put that off is to have the master plan done first so that again we get the most bang for our buck on this stuff. The Agricultural Commission was looking for some money for the Cogart Farm restoration and again another Parks and Rec project to do some basketball court expansion at the Reservoir Park. And those projects totaled another 255,000 and change. So the total for all the projects um, requests for this year was 12,689,189. So our 1.4 is a drop, a drop at the beginning of the bucket. So is there any questions about any of the projects or 
the information. Any questions from members of the Board of Selectmen? Alan. Um, I just had a couple questions. Uh, you know, you have this weighting value, which, uh, you know, I, I assume is to set priority. And I was kind of wondering, you know, how that actually works uh, since you had mentioned like the, uh, the master plan is, you know, something you strongly recommend, but that weight is pretty light. It's way down at the bottom. Um, and then um, along with that, the, I was wondering how the dog pound rates uh, and whether or not last year um, any money was put away for it or any previous year. I mean, we have a total of 67,000, but I think you've been asking for 30 for at least a couple of years. Has any of that actually been socked away or are we still looking at 67,000 to actually get that done? Yeah, unfortunately we have not, it, the dog pound has not made, managed to make the final cut. Um, so we have not put anything away towards the dog pound yet. There's nothing in the capital improvement um, funds for that at this time. So, so when I'm you sorry, get, go ahead. I'm sorry, uh, when you get, uh, you know, when after the budget season is done and you've ended up with, I don't know, I think it was like 890 last year or somewhere, 884 or something like that. You end up with, let's say 800,000 out of your 1.4 ask. Um, do you just take, you know, the highest weighted values and run down the line until you run out of money? Or do you, is there any kind of, kind of rejuggling of the priority list at that point? There, there is a rejuggling, Alan, and sometimes things will fall off the list because they flat out broke in the time it took to get the budget approved and somebody had to fix them. So those no longer become our priority because they're now complete. Um, other projects can, although it hasn't happened in the last couple of years, other projects can suddenly rise to a higher priority than they were at the time that we prepared the budget. So they may take precedence over something. Um, we don't go strictly by that weight value because if we did, we would never get to a parks and rec program. Uh, weighted value tend to, I don't have the spreadsheet up. Um, I'll try to remember the categories. Um, it takes into effect whether something is mandated. It takes into effect whether something is a safety issue. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other stuff, whether it will ultimately return money to the town over time because of increased efficiency or cost savings. Um, something like changing over to LED lights would score highly in that category. So there's about six categories that we rate things in, and some of them are more important, like mandated, the mandated category, which is why you see a lot of these things um, in the safety category are weighted a little higher than the nice to haves, um, like it improves the quality of life in East Windsor. As much as we want to do that, we also need to keep everybody safe. So it's a big spreadsheet that has lots of calculations in it. Um, and we just kind of plug numbers one to 10 into the different categories and see where they fall out. Um, and then, and we don't necessarily, as I said, we don't fund only those things that are rated the highest because we would never get to some of these projects if we did that. They obviously get more of our attention, but they don't get 100% of it. Thank you. Other questions from members of the Board of Selectmen? Marie. Yeah, Kathy, just for clarification, um, and it's probably a mute point, but I just need it for cross-references. On the bunker gear um, for the uh, Broadway Fire Department, um, it looked like you said $60,000, but it got reduced to forty-five. dollars um, But I don't see so where- So actually- Go ahead. Yeah, so they were looking for a total of 135 um, for the project, and we started trying to do 45,000 a year, which would take care of all of it in three years, which is what needed to be done. So okay. we had put in for 45,000 last year, but then with the funds that we received, we ended up only giving them 30. So we pushed that 15 to this year to add to the 45 that was part of the original three year plan, and that's why it's at 60 this year. Okay, so right now you have 30 set aside. Yes, or they may have already spent it and bought some. I'm, I, I, once the money is stored away, right. I have to ask Amy if they spent it. <laughs> yeah, okay, thanks. I just needed that uh, for when we talk about their budget tonight. Thanks. Sure. So that 30,000 is in the current year. And because the CIP committee put this list together prior to the adoption of Ordinance 20-1, 
uh, that will that will reconfigure the calculation as the CIP allocations are made because Broadbrook Fire will be funding their own capital uh, under that new ordinance. Yeah, I just didn't see it in their new breakdown, but it could be all encumbered of a total number. But I'm not sure. It may be part of their total CIP number that they said was two hundred thousand. No, nope, that's just it. <laughs> Amy. Two two answers. No, they haven't spent their thirty yet. It's still in CNR. Um, and two, their bunker gear is $25,000 a year now in their supply line in their new budget. That's before you guys now. In, in which line, please? Supplies. The supply, supply line. line. It yep. went from like 60000 to 80000 or something like that. To eighty six. Yep. yep. That's 25 of that is for bunker gear. Okay, thanks. That's what I wanted to know. The two hundred is just vehicles. Yep. Okay. Okay. Of the board on the CIP presentation. Seeing none, because this is a, a workshop function uh, and it has heretofore included members of the Board of Finance, I'd ask if there are any members on the Board of Finance uh, who had any questions for Kathy about CIP. Anybody from the Board of Finance? Seeing none, Mrs. Simonelli, thank you very much. You're welcome. Good luck. <laughs> so, we're now going to move on to a uh, discussion on where the town budget sits. Um, and there are a couple of housekeeping things that we need to do before we go department by department. Um, just give me a moment to pull up my notes here. Um, so Amy has done an analysis of expenses that were used uh, in the current year to support the Broadbrook Fire Department. Um, as you all remember, we committed to removing the current year costs of fire service from the town's general fund. Those reductions and associated, associated lines are as follows. Um, reduction from the Broadbrook Fire Department in the amount of $467,000. Reduction in the fire marshal budget in the amount of $21,138. Reduction in the Tallinn dispatch line by $22,000. Uh, leaving $9,400 in the Tallinn dispatch line. Reduction in the 27th payroll by $5,472 to leave a total of $150,528. Reduction in the FICA line by $20,349 to leave a total of $527,151. Reduce the workers' compensation line by $12,000 to a total of $155,360. Uh, those reductions equate to a total reduction in fire service funding in the amount of $547,959 uh, and once removed satisfies the board's commitment to remove costs associated with the Broadbrook Fire Department from the town's general fund. So I would ask for a motion to make those changes. Marita Sula will make a motion to uh, make those changes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Okay, now there are two other changes that we've identified that need to be made. Um, one pertaining to health insurance and one pertaining to the emergency management communications line. Um, that would be to reduce the, the uh, EE benefits health insurance line by an amount of $77,450 for a total of $1,595,400. And the second is to reduce the emergency management communications line by an amount of $675 to a total of $8,575. I'd ask a, a motion to make those changes. Moved. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Marie just is a second. It. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Blackman D'Souza. Aye. Blackman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. With those changes made, uh, the town budget request would stand at $16,606,573. Uh, 
which is an increase of $18,514 or 0.11% over last year's budget. So we can go through the, the budget on a department by department basis and make any uh, have any discussion and make any changes that members of the board see fit. But I wanted to let you know where things stood as of, um, as of those motions being made. Amy and I have tried to figure out how best to, to graphically display this in a Zoom environment. Um, it's not the ideal. Um, so if you don't uh, kindly bear with us, we're gonna do the best we can. Um, I will share my screen. Amy, I'm gonna pull up that Excel sheet that uh, we talked about, right? Or do you wanna do it in Munis? No, you can pull up that Excel sheet. And I'm on tab one, revenue and expenses. Um, sure. I mean, that just shows the overall picture of where we are right now. You want to go to budget? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is those changes that we just talked about. This shows where we are over last year. That's the dollar difference and that's the percentage difference. Jason, can we get hard copies of that set? Uh, yes. Thank you. So Amy, how do we, how best do we see the department by department line? Is that, is that you on a Munis screen? Um, I guess so, or the reports that they have in front of them already. So if I'm gonna pull out a report, I'm gonna look at the one uh, dated 225 dated 1504, right? Is that the comparative, Jay? That is the comparative, yes. That's With, the one everybody asked for. It shows you what the department had asked for. It shows you what Jay's put forward and what our numbers are currently at the Board of Selectmen level. What's the date of that one, Jay? It's 225, and the timestamp is 1504. 225? Yes. I got several of them here. I think the one they have has everybody in it and the timestamp is um, 1617. Yep. Same date. Yep. On the 25th? 1617 is the timestamp on the report. I'll see if I can find it and pull it up. Well, then I'm going through my budget book. I can't seem to find it. <laughs> Give me one second. I sent it, I think on the 25th, after we had our last budget presentation on the 24th, um, you guys had asked about comparatives. This shows um, current budget, um, a revised current budget, the department request, the selectmen superintendent. Does anybody, have, does anybody have it on the board? Because the last one I got is 222. Here it is. I have I it have, in my email. I have it. It was sent on 225 at 620 feet. Give me a minute to pull it up. It's on the screen. I'm going to pull it up. Any particular departments we want to start with? Uh, doesn't matter to me, Jay. The only, the only question that I had um, was with the um, capital improvement with the fire department um, in their budget and my concerns 200,000 um, they had it in their capital gear they and 
those are my concerns that I had for those. The rest for me, I'm good. Okay. Um, so let's let's just walk through and and we'll just do department by department. Any changes in the selectman's office budget? This budget is actually one dollar less than last year. Seeing none, charter revision was eliminated because there is no charter revision. Yep. Ethics Commission is flat funded. Any issues with the Ethics Commission? Right. Seeing none, uh, the Board of Finance is also flat. If I'm reading that correctly. Any issues with the Board of Finance? Nope. Wise, that was wise. Um, next is the Assessor's Office. Um, their budget is very nearly flat. It's a difference of $195, if I'm doing that math right. Um, that's exclusive of contractual obligations, which are not yet finalized. Any questions or comments on the assessor's budget? Board of Assessment Appeals. Tax Collector. Treasurer. Alan, did you have something? Uh, no, I was just gonna, I know you suggested that if anybody had anything specific um, to call it out, I was just gonna suggest that, but I figured if anybody wanted to call it out, they would have done that. Anything on the treasurer's office? I have a note, I have a note Jason, on um, 49.0.101. That, okay. That's good. The Board of Finance gonna handle that. It, uh, what is that? I, I, I made a personal note, Board of Finance to handle. Any idea why I would have written that? What what account number was that? Uh, 1005-4137 under 490-101, the minus $800,000, $962. It was added in here. Amy, are you following that? I think she's looking at revenue. Are you looking at a revenue report, yes. Marie? Yes. Yep, I am. So, so the 800,000 is when the Board of Finance makes a decision whether they're gonna use any um, unallocated fund balance to lower the mill rate. Okay. Hang so on, we don't really get to have that say. So the current revenue as it is does not have that in there. Okay. I was just cross referencing. All right, I'm good. Capital Improvement Commission. Legal. Activities and fees. <clears throat> IT. Town Clerk. Registrars of Voters. Planning. Whoops, too far. Planning and Zoning Commission. Zoning Board of Appeals. Property Insurance.
Inland Wetlands Agency. Veterans Commission. Agriculture Commission. Conservation Commission. Economic Development Commission. Police. Police. Yes, ma'am. On the, on, the, on the police, I just want to make sure that um, the public is aware, so I'm going to use this opportunity, that the new position that they have in there for the mental health um, switch over um, with the current police office for the other, um, that is going to be phenomenal for the town. So um, I just want to put that out there that in conjunction with um, Melissa Moltesi and um, social services and police department. Um, that's a good, that's a good fit for the town. On that point, that, that is such an innovative idea that Chief DeMarco and I have a meeting with Commissioner Ravella at the Department of Emergency Management and Public Protection to talk about that as a potential for, as a state model uh, next week. Nice. Anything else on the police department? Police Commission. Broadbrook Fire has already been zeroed out. Yeah. Emergency Management. Building Department. Fire Marshal has been zeroed out. Communications. Public Works. Town Properties. Road improvements. Building committee. Sanitation. Jason, how much time is left on the contract we currently have? I believe we are in year three of four. Three of four, okay. It's not up this year. I think this is year three of a four-year contract. Okay. Senior services. Elderly commission. Social services. Libraries. Recreation. Historical Commission. Next up is the Board of Education, but we don't get, we don't have any prediction there. Debt service. Capital improvements. Sarah. Okay, I'm just trying to, I have so many screens I'm trying to look at here. Um, okay, so you, Cut. through your recommendation it's the 920 mm -hmm. okay oh, 
Anything else on that? Um, I just, there's, you know, the dog pound that's that's been bothering me. I just wish that there was some way. I know that we don't, they prioritize the projects and such, but I hate to see us cut it that much and then never get to some of those projects that really need attention. Well, they're actually, the CIP committee is actually advisory to the board of selectmen. We have the mm -hmm. and the projects that get funded. Um, so when the budget is passed with whatever amount is allocated in the general fund budget, we can make the determination on which of those projects the, the selectmen want to fund once the new fiscal year starts. So if there's a particular project of personal interest to you, we can talk about it at that point. I'd like to concur with you, Sarah, on what I was thinking, um, regardless of where it comes from, there, it's gotten to the point where we can't not do something, at least get part of it done this year um, from some source. I mean, it's mm -hmm. we just can't keep sitting on it. I, I agree with you. I mean, I know you mentioned in a previous selectmen's meeting that you took a tour and selectman Nordell and I actually took a tour back in December as well to see the condition. So um, I would definitely like to see something done there for sure. Thanks. Jason, sure. I know you have a whole plan with debt services in, in conjunction with CIP and, and how that will all work. Um, but I, I agree with Sarah, you know, and are, are we really going to get that much more done in your plan with this big of a cut to CIP? Yes. Okay. Okay, then I'm fine with the 920. Even but I, I concur with Sarah now, and I, I really would like to see Dog Pound a top priority. So keep in mind um, that we're later in this meeting, we're going to be asking folks to do um, an added appropriation to pay down existing debt. Um, part of that existing debt includes those lease, lease payments. So even in, even in the, the circumstance where we do no additional projects beyond that, we're freeing up 94,000, almost $95,000 currently tied up in lease purchase payments. Um, that's a 10% increase in the CIP allocation that's currently being used to basically pay a car loan. Um, that, so that the, the flat funding that I'm proposing is effectively a 10% increase in the uh, available CIP funding uh, if just that added appropriation to pay down our existing debt passes. But that, in, you know, in the case of debt services, the dog pound's not one of those projects that would see, you know, a bonding type, you know, scenario. Um, and there's a lot of projects, I think, that have been kicked down the road that are in that situation where they're not, um, they, they haven't been a high priority um, because they're a small dollar amount and, they're also not a bonding type project. So. Right, but CIP isn't bonded dollars. CIP is money that's set aside for specific projects. And if those projects aren't able to be completed within the existing year that they're funded, they um, regress on recurring fund. The debt service pays for bonded projects. Um, so they are two different pots of money that you're talking about. And, and the CNR, the CIP allocation funds CNR. The debt service funds bonding. Okay. Any other questions or comments on CIP? It's Amy and I would just share that um, within our CIP group right now, we have the 920 plus we have the 94, almost 95,000 for the lease payments. So if we did do that debt pay down, it wouldn't affect the debt service line. It would affect this CIP account. So it would really free up more CIP money for some of those smaller projects that we never get to. And that would also be on an ongoing basis. Any other questions or comments on CIP? How about on For clarification, just for clarification, Amy, I did get the 225 
I just um it was named something different. And I had it in a separate file, but I've got it now. Any other comments on CIP? Employee benefits. This straddles two pages, so I don't think I can. No, I can't. I can't have uh, both of the. I can't have page 10 and 11 on the same screen in this program. So if anybody wants me to turn back, I'm happy to do that. But I, I just can't, it's not letting me split it. What are we gonna no. do? Uh, cut the 27th payroll? <laughs> <laughs> Furloughs. Um, so how about uh, contingency? So I, I noted no changes to the budget as it currently stands. I'm going to change screens. Yep. Does anybody want to go back to any particular department? Seeing none. Uh, pull pull back this one. <clears throat> So that leaves us not on this page. That leaves the town budget as presented at 16606573. We should talk about revenue too, though, right, Amy? A couple of changes there? Uh, sure. So one of the things that uh, you'll notice is a, a decrease in revenue. There are or things. One of this one here, adult education, that's a state grant. That just is, is what it is. Um, if that changes, that'll change, but that's based on the governor's budget recommendation. Um, the other three items, first one I'll, I'll ask Amy to talk about is the interest on investments, which took a nosedive. Uh, Amy, you want to explain what happened there and why and what we can do about it? Um, we can't do a lot about it. We'll start there. Um, and I did, I think I shared with this board when we did the revenue section, we had gone from a high of almost 3% interest to down to 0 0.0000018 over the last three year period. So um, we have currently earned $13,000 this year through seven months. So I am estimating that it will only be $25,000. So it's same pot of money just about, but the difference between hundreds of thousands of dollars in the past and $25,000 this year. And I really can't do anything about it. So that's Except just for inflation. <laughs> the irony is that is one of those budget lines that benefits from inflation and higher interest rates. And because we don't have either right now, it's just what it is. Um, so the, the next line up is the transfer from the fund balance. Currently, the town is using $750,000. Um, that will, that determination on, on if or how much of that to use is left to the board of, uh, board of Finance. That is their jurisdiction to make that determination. So that really is just an FYI, but this is an Excel sheet. So we can show you uh, what the change in the impact in the um, mill rate would be if you made certain assumptions. The other thing that um, Amy and I were talking and agree should, I, I don't want to speak for Amy, but I believe we agree, um, should be changed is the uh, reduction in the interest and in fees for the tax collector. Um, her history strongly supports that she could make that 100,000 number uh, where she currently is. Um, she's suggesting, she is Patty, is suggesting lower that, lowering that to 75,000, but the history supports she can make at least that. Amy, is there anything else you want to add on that? Nope. Amy, how yes. much current how much currently of the fund balance do we need to transfer? Um, currently we have two point, um, I think it's two point seven million over our um, maximum. Thank you. So I'd ask the board's consideration to increase that interest in fees line back up to the original 100%. I would do that, Jason. Is that a motion? Yes, that's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded. <clears throat> Sorry. 
Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Allen voted in the affirmative. Uh, Selectman Nordell. Aye. That would, that would leave, without any use of the fund balance at all, assuming our budget is what it is, would leave a, a mill rate change of 0.87 or 2.5%. Assuming that the Board of Finance did the same thing they did this year, 750 from the fund balance, that would leave a mill rate change of 0.1 mills or 0.28%. That again is not our jurisdiction to make. Ours is the, the uh, yep. expenditure side, but just so you get a sense of where the budget is, assuming they, they do a status quo uh, revenue side. So, does anybody else have any changes or recommendations for the budget? If not, I'd ask for a motion to approve the, the town budget of 16,606,573. Move. Selectman Nordell, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. So, oh, uh, Alan, did you have something? Yeah, I think, uh, I think you guys did a nice job putting this together this year. It's a team effort. I mean, everybody has a role in this. No, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, Amy did a lot of work. Everybody did a lot of work. And um, I think it was a pretty orderly process. And I think we put something together that uh, invests in the town and, um, and isn't spending a ton of money. Other comments? Seeing none, Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Matka. Aye. Selectman Baker. Selectman Nordell. Aye. All right, that concludes the Board of Selectmen's role in the town budget for this coming fiscal year. Our next item is to take up the Broadbrook Fire Department and discuss and vote on their budget recommendation. Just give me a moment, I'll pull up something that we can actually lay eyes on here. Um, I don't have a, a, Amy, we don't have a worksheet for that one, right? I do. We have the budget page. I think Melissa, I don't know if she posted it on the web or sent it out to everybody. Yeah, I've got that, but I'm talking about a manipulable. Um, uh, we didn't get it in manipulable. We got it in a hard copy. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, this is what was submitted to us by the Broadbrook Fire Commission to support uh, the Town of East Windsor Broadbrook Fire Department Fire Service for the 21-22 fiscal year. Um, all their changes are included and visible. Any questions or comments on this? Just, just for clarification, Jay, um, they want to go from three uh, part-time to four part-time this year, and they adding two additional. Hang on a second. For the night coverage that brings uh, up. Nope. So what they're doing is they have two people on night just Friday and Saturday right now. Yeah. They want to go to all seven days a week. So, so, so I sent out to everybody, I think an analysis of the staffing. Yeah, I'll pull yep. that up. Yep. So basically that, that change from going from two nights a week to seven nights a week is an increase of $74,880. 74,800 and what? 80. Okay. And then on the day shift, they're going from three people, eight hour shifts, yep. five days a week to four people, nine hour shifts, five days a week. 
So that increases 56,000 at the current $18 an hour that they pay. But they're also going to $19 an hour. So that gives you another increase of that gets it to 288 496 for their staffing. 288 496. Yeah, that's what I got. Which is a the in the dollar an hour raise is a five and a half percent raise from going to $18 an hour to $19 an hour. Is this a sheet you guys want to look at or do you want me to pull up the other one? I don't think I can do both. Any changes that anybody wants to see here? Is it good as is? Well, okay, so I'm a little confused now that this is 490. I thought they were talking about 900K, of, of, um, with including their CIP and a couple other things. There, so it's a change of 490. This is this is the but this is the current. Well, I'm sorry, I missed that middle line. Sorry. Yeah, it's not super clear on here. I'm sorry about that. This is their request column. This is the change column. Gotcha. I, I'm going to be honest. I have I have mixed feelings about the budget. Um, we worked hard. We worked hard to meet our commitment to fix the problem that was in town uh, between Warehouse Point and Broadbrook. Um, I just concerned that we're adding too much too fast for the first year and the changeover. And I'm concerned um, how that's gonna be perceived by the public. I'm just throwing it out there. I understand that they're trying to move forward and I get all of that, but um, it's a big increase. I would agree with that, Marie. And I was, as I was thinking about this the last couple of days, you know, one, it's a bit large of an increase, but two, then I, on the other side of that argument, um, this is the first opportunity that the residents of Broadbrook have been able to have a say directly on how they want the fire department to look. And so part of me is, is interested to see, you know, what the public has to say about this budget. And, and, you know, what kind of direction they want to provide as far as, you know, you know, do they want it? Do they want more part-time employees or not? Do they want, uh, you know, to put money away for the equipment or not? I mean, in the end, they're going to make that decision. So I'm, I'm a little bit conflicted as to whether or not I want to make a lot of cuts uh, or, or just let the public figure it out, um, you know, come referendum time and allow the fire department at, you know, in the meantime to, uh, you know, get the word out there of what they're trying to accomplish here. And I, and I agree with that. And that's why, you know, I was hesitant to even want to say anything, but I just think it's something that needed to be addressed. Great. Uh, Selectman Nordell here, I, you know, in some ways I agree with, with both of you, um, but but you know, no one spoke up during the public hearing and opposed you know, what's being presented by them. Um, and, uh, you know, again, the, the public's gonna get to vote on it. The taxpayers of Broadbrook will get to vote on this. Um, so if they disapprove, I think it's best that, you know, if, if they disapprove and the, you know, cuts have to be made, that it's, it's best to the fire department to make the cuts um, they know best where where to do that, um, and, and I don't think we do. So, I, for me, I, I'm going to leave it alone. I have no no problems with this. I agree with everything that's been said. You know, I think like the fire department, um, they know fire services better than we do. So um, I think let the public have an opportunity to have a say. And if cuts need to be made, I think it's best that the fire commissioners do that. 
I would agree. It's fair. I think that, you know, to Charlie's point that uh, nobody spoke up during the public hearing, I think we, we kind of see that all the time. And, you know, nobody comes to the kickoff budget hearing. Nobody comes to any of our workshops. And nobody knows anything that's really going on until all of a sudden, you know, it all explodes two weeks before the referendum. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions and, and, not, and a lot of misinformation. So I think it's really, really important, especially this year, that, uh, you know, advocates of certain parts of the budget are out there making sure that the, the proper information is out there and, and, and why the numbers are where they are. So if everybody's on the same page, can I get a motion to approve the budget as presented? I'll make Fulton a motion. Nordell will move to approve the Broadbrook Fire Department's budget as they presented. Second by? Second. Motion. Uh, I, got, I got Alan. Motion okay. by Charlie, seconded by Alan. Any further discussion? I told you this was going to be a quick meeting. Um, Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Okay. I'm going to stop my show now. Um, we are now on to bid waiver requests uh, from the assessor. Where's my packet? Is Helen with us? I think she is. I'm here. Good evening, Helen. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, so Helen spoke with us about her uh, her request to use her CNR money uh, to onboard the, the vision software immediately. Um, and she submitted a memo to us, which was included in your packet, asking for the town to wi uh, waive the bid process associated with the conversion to vision. Um, this is the same format and circumstance that was used when we uh, waived the bid process over to the Munis financial software. I think Helen did a, a good job of outlining her arguments in the memo. Um, are there any questions for her on her requests? Any questions for Helen? I think she explained it well in her narrative. If there are no questions, then I would ask for a motion uh, to waive the bid request for the conversion of current assessors camera software to vision government systems. I'll make that motion, Jason. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Um, any discussion? Just for clarification, that 6,496 is gonna be waived for the first year? Yes. And she's also worked with um, Joe Sauerhofer and our IT consultant to make sure that, uh, any, th that there are no hidden costs associated with conversion, whether it be uh, basically anything that's not included in the quote. So the true number is what she's asking for. Okay. Any other discussion? Nope. Seeing none, Selectman Muska? Aye. Selectman Baker? Aye. Selectman Nordell? Aye. Selectman D'Souza? Aye. Okay, we are now Thank on. Thank you, everybody. And have a good night. You too, Helen. Congratulations. We're now on to a resolution of support for the Federal Equality Act. This is something that was discussed by the Diversity Council and I, I believe approved by them. It was submitted to them at the request of Selectman Muska. Uh, since that initial submission on Sarah's part, the House of Representatives in Washington has taken this up, but the United States Senate has not. Um, it's a statement of equality that I think you all will agree that the town ought to stand behind. Uh, uh, issue, uh, just to give you an update on the, uh, on the, uh, on the PVP loan forgiveness that's already been. Uh, if there is, if there's any discussion from the board, I'd welcome that. Otherwise, uh, I'd ask for a motion to, to approve it and authorize me to transmit our support to our representatives in Congress. Sarah Muska, go ahead. 
Selectman, I'd like to um, approve the resolution in support of the Federal Equality Act and authorize the first Selectman to sign it. Is there a second? Marie D'Souza will second it. Any discussion? Um, if this are, were to pass tonight, we would be the 14th municipality in Connecticut to pass, uh, pass such a resolution. Wow, it's actually a pretty good, pretty good company to be in. I'll include that in my cover letter. Any other discussion? Seeing none, Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Resolution is adopted. We will transmit that to Congress. Okay. Now we're on to agenda item 9D. This is a request for an added appropriation to pay down debts. Um, there are three things that we're going to do in this resolution. Uh, if it's adopted, we're going to pay off our clean water, one of our clean water loans. We're going to pay off our lease purchases, and we're going to do uh, capital defeasance on our 2014 refunding bonds, 2019 East Windsor Middle Middle School roof uh, projects. The uh, by prepaying the clean water loans and the lease purchases, uh, we will forego the town earning $750,000 in interest over the life of those loans if we don't pay it down. That should not be construed as to be a $750,000 savings in the budget. It's, it's merely not, in, not incurring interest on the credit card. Um, the capital defeasance will actually free up debt capacity. So Charlie, this is that difference between capital and debt. Um, it'll free up debt capacity that would allow the town to do future bond payments sooner. Uh, to work on some of those projects that have been um, lingering un unattended to for too long. Um, so there's the resolution uh, that outlines what this does, which is authorizing an uh, added appropriation in, in the amount of $350,000. It goes through the, the legal machinations that are required to do that. Say it's 3.5 million. What did I say? <laughs> 350,000. <000. laughs> Thank you. That is a significant difference. Thank you. Um, it forwards the uh, resolution, if approved by the for, uh, Board of Finance, to a special town meeting, um, which I would ask be held on April 29th. And that's to meet statutory requirements. There is a narrow window that we have to um, address this. And so I, I picked the Thursday within that six day span because it's our usual night. Um, and further, uh, towards the back of the resolution, it sets the referendum hours as uh, for the for the year as 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Statute requires that it be 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. and we're setting it at 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. So that's what that's what the resolution before you does. Any questions or comments? So that 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 goes to referendum on the same day as um the budget goes to referendum for the first time. So it'll be on the same ballot. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, I mean, this is kind of a no brainer. This fixes the problem of not being able to bond any further projects that are just sitting there wasting away and getting worse and worse. So I think it's, I think the time is right. So I would ask for a motion to adopt the resolution to set the town meeting date at April 29th. Those are the two things we need to do and to forward it to the Board of Finance for their consideration. We can read the resolution in total if you'd prefer, but we can also just adopt it by reference. I'll make a motion to um, accept the Town of East Windsor Board of Selectmen resolution um, for, you want me to get into detail? Yep. As, then, huh? as presented is fine, but we need, as, we need to set As the presented with the date of April 29th um, for the public hearing 
and for May 11th, um, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, for the vote by the town. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Selectman D'Souza. Aye. I'm going to ask that we hold agenda items or that we uh, table agenda items E and F. Make a motion to table agenda items E and F. Selectman Nordell will second. Any discussion? Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Um, for another day or just for uh, we're gonna we're gonna postpone them. We may take them up after executive session. We may not take them up after executive session. It'll depend on the conversation. Okay. Uh, 9G tax refunds. Sarah Muska Selectman, I'll move to approve the tax refunds totaling six thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars and seventy-two cents. Selectman Nordell will second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Okay. Now we're going to go on to agenda item 9H, which is a discussion of the granting of a state easement. I just need to find this. Bear with me for a second here. I got to pull it up. Uh, this is something that was sent around to you earlier this evening or this afternoon. I can't remember which. Um, so this is the, the town would be granting an easement to the state to do certain improvements at the intersection of South Main Street and South Water Street. Um, and that would allow them to, I'm gonna, I'll be specific here. Um, give me one second. Nope. Hang on. Um, Granting the easement is to accommodate all state DOT required improvements at South Water Street and South Main Street, um, including the installation of a signal replacement, uh, required pavement work, line striping, signage, and so on, um, as, pro uh, as proposed and approved by OSTA, and this pertains to the development of the Silverman Group project. I sent the documents around earlier. Um, are there any, has everybody had a chance to review those? I repeat with them, Jason, but it doesn't look like we have to do anything on this because it was already approved by the state and it's also was approved, I think, as part of the um, planning and zoning group. So um, this that has been the subject of considerable discussion. Um, it was also approved by the previous Board of Selectmen and my predecessor was authorized to sign it, but there's no documentation that that happened. Oh. It may have, but no. after consultation with a lot of lawyers, um, the uh, decision was made that it, it was best to, I think the phrase was to do a belt and suspenders approach, which was even if it was already done, do it again to make sure that we know it was done. Uh, so the conditions of the easement are the same for what was requested and approved for the Sardilli project when that was what was going in. Um, yeah. Based on the advice of council, the recommendation is that we approve the uh, easement to the state again. And so the, it, the motion here would be to approve the easement and to authorize the first selectman to sign and file the same. Jason, Go ahead. Does, is this, um, is the developer picking up the tab for these changes to the roads? 
Yeah. Okay. It, it's there's no fiscal impact to us or the state to my knowledge yes any other discussion selectman nordell would move that the board authorize the first selectman to sign the easement agreement with the state of Connecticut. Is there a second? Larry, just a second that. Motion made by Charlie, seconded by Marie. Any further discussion? Seeing that? Selectman Musk. Yes, Marie. I'm sorry, they're using 12 South Main Street as um, the address? Yep. Is that the building itself? That's the curb cut address, yes. That's the curb cut address, okay. Because that's a piece of vacant land that the town owns. Oh, okay. It, like the town owns that like little chunk on the corner. Yeah. Story behind it, but the town owns it. Okay. It's the intersection closest to that address. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Next is Selectman Reports. We had a very busy week last week as a community. Uh, between Thursday and Friday, town staff partnered with Southern Auto Auction to help distribute more than 1,300 boxes of food through a USDA Farmers to Families Food Box Distribution Program. We'll be doing this again on March 25th at Southern Auto Parking Lot located at 5 Phelps Road. I wanna give a very special thank you to the uh, volunteers who helped with that event, to Southern Auto who uh, also helped with the event and provided the space for us to do it. Um, our town staff did a great job helping support that. Um, and, and other partners in the community like the Hunger Action Team. Uh, that was a, a really heartwarming thing to be a part of. We also had another local COVID vaccine clinic at the Town Hall Annex. We were able to provide 167 doses of vaccine to people in the community. This is made possible through a partnership with the North Central Health District, Priority Urgent Care, and the Vernon Regional COVID Vaccine Program. We're currently keeping a waiting list of East Windsor residents eligible to receive the vaccine and call that list whenever we're able to hold a local clinic. Unfortunately, we're not always able to do that. Uh, it depends completely on the supply provided by uh, the federal government and the state government through the health district and um, priority urgent care. Uh, this week, all available vaccine was uh, redirected to go to public school staff, um, but we're hoping as soon as uh, vaccine is available to be able to to host another one of those. Um, there are other alternatives to just being on the town of East Windsor waiting list that I think are important to identify. Um, as supply becomes more readily available, there will be more places to get it. And the objective should be to get the vaccine when you can. People can go to cvs.com, walgreens.com, walmart.com slash COVID, or they can call the Vernon Regional Call Center at 860-896-4568. Um, we, we also continue to keep our waiting list and you can call the Community Services Department to be added to that. The town's emergency radio system is approaching the end of its useful life. This system supports our police department, fire departments, ambulance association, school security, public works, water pollution control, parks and recreation, and senior services. It is a comprehensive radio system. Uh, because of how significantly interwoven the system is and, and that it's past its useful life, the town has begun to consider replacement options. We issued an RFP that closed a few weeks ago, um, and we did have two reputable firms respond to the RFP, which asked for uh, effectively a consultant to help us map out what that roadmap is. Our next step is to review those submissions and circle back with our emergency management team and then make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen in the next few weeks. I took the opportunity to join the Graduate and Celebrate Committee meeting recently. Um, they are hard at work trying to raise money for this year's graduation ceremony, but because of the pandemic, fundraising has been a challenge this year. 
They're looking at creative ways to replace traditional modes of fundraising. Um, they're running a raffle in hopes that they'll be able to replace past events like basketball ticket sales, auctions, or tag sales. Um, contact Kristen Bloom for more information. Um, Senator Anwar, Representative Foster, and I met with Commissioner with, with DOT Commissioner uh, Giulietti yesterday, um, and we met with his team and talked about the longstanding restrictions on the Stiles, Stiles Road Bridge that prohibit emergency vehicles from using that bridge. Um, this has been a problem since 2011. The conversation with the commissioner was very productive, and we expect the bridge to be completely replaced within the next two years. But we also expect a resolution with, uh, that would allow emergency vehicles to use the bridge within a matter of weeks. Uh, the most significant proposal in my budget recommendation that's since been approved by this board is the inclusion of funding for the police department to establish a mental health team supported by grant funded social workers within the department. Chief DeMarco and his team have put together a very impressive data supported plan that makes sense based on the needs of the community. It also should be a model for other communities in the state. And with that in mind, as I mentioned earlier, Chief DeMarco and I will be meeting with Emergency Services and Public Protection Commissioner Ravella to discuss our concepts. We really believe that our team in East Windsor is on the forefront of responsive preventative policing and that this can be a model for the state. That's all I have. I submit that respectfully and call on Deputy Selectman Marita Sousa. Yeah, I don't have much, um, just our regular budget workshops, um, fire department, plus our uh, budget workshops and uh, special meetings. Um, and the only uh, liaison uh, I, um, board I had uh, was the Economic Development Commission. And the only thing they worked on was the bylaws to update them. Um, but other than that, I don't have anything else. Selectman Baker. Um, okay, uh, planning and zoning uh, has got a little bit lighter schedule these days, but they did approve a liquor permit for uh, Chez Hospitality, which is going into the, <clears throat> the Friendly uh, site in Sophia's Plaza. It's basically a food to go, and the, the liquor permit is, is basically, um, you know, alcohol would be a part of a basket of you if you ordered a a meal and you got a bottle of wine with it or a six pack of beer or whatever. It's not for, it's not like a package store or um, drinking on the premises or anything, but so that was approved with, uh, uh, with not too much effort. Um, we also watched a, a POCD presentation from um, Ruth Calabrese for uh, just doing a, uh, what she called a midpoint check-in and we'll be hearing more about this on the board of selectmen, but basically looking at what was done on the, um, you know, to, on the action items that are due for our last uh, POCD, which was, you know, five years ago. So um, basically we'll be trying to uh, move some of those action items along rather than just have the thing gather dust until we make a new one. <clears throat> uh, Agricultural Commission is working on a list of farms in the town that they will publish. Uh, so the list will include, you know, the farms, what they produce and how to get a hold of people. Uh, so there's actually a surprising number of little farms in the town and most of them are little farms, uh, you know, kind of little family farms that are producing a, a couple things. So uh, that'll be coming along before too long. Um, the Conservation Commission is working on uh, open space ordinance, uh, which is nearing completion. Um, and Wetlands Commission uh, had a light schedule as well. They approved the uh, permit for the demolition of a building that is uh, going to be replaced by a, a new business on Route 5. Um, and they also finished up work on the Wetlands Fine Ordinance, which will be coming before the Board of Selectmen um, when they can get on the schedule. And that's all I have for tonight. April 1st, I think, on that. Yes, I think that's right. Sarah. Okay. Um, the first selectman already touched on this, but on Friday, I was happy to volunteer at the Farmers to Families uh, food distribution at Southern Auto as well. Um, I thought it was really well organized and much needed event for our community. Um, on March 1st, the Warehouse Point Board of Fire Commissioners held their regular monthly meeting 
the building port permit for the addition to station one could possibly be issued sometime this week and contractors are ready to begin work upon receipt. The encroachment permit has also been submitted to the Connecticut Department of Transportation. There were 43 calls in the month of February, three of which were structure fires. There were no cases of COVID-19 in the department last month, and 60% of active staff and volunteers have been vaccinated. 24 fire inspections were completed in February. Fire Marshal Rich Austin alluded that COVID might be starting to have an impact on progress being made at some of the projects in the area, including water mill landing, as things seem to be at a standstill with no progress being made. Chief James Barton applied for a FEMA assistance to firefighters COVID-19 grant for personal protective equipment on behalf of the fire district and was notified last week that their submission has been approved. The grant totals $52,500 with a 5% match from the district included. The fire commissioners voted to approve their 2021-2022 budget, totaling $967,994 with a mill rate of 1.9. The district will hold a public hearing and a vote on April 5th at 7 p.m. And that's all that I have. Charlie. Okay, on February 22nd, I attended the Diversity Council meeting. Uh, they continued to discuss the need for new members on the committee. Uh, they also resumed talks and presented a resolution in support of changing the name of Plantation Road. Um, once this has final approval from the Diversity Council, it will come before the Board of Selectmen to take further action. Uh, they also put forth to the Board of Selectmen a proclamation of equality representation, which we voted in favor of tonight. Um, this month, there was again no meeting for Beautification Committee. Um, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Union, new to East Windsor on Newberry Road, donated and delivered 20 brand new telephone poles to the East Windsor Trolley Museum this week. Uh, this is a much needed donation because a good portion of poles on their existing line are starting to fail. Um, I also believe they're gonna be helping them put those up as well. Um, I would remind everyone that uh, we still have several boards and commissions with current vacancies um, and would encourage anyone who wants to get involved to contact any one of us selectmen um, or a board or commission chairperson. Um, the application for boards and commissions is on the town's website. And that's all I have for this month. Thank you, Charlie. Um, this is, we're not going to move on to public participation, which is the public second opportunity to address the board. Are there any members, members of the public who would like to speak? If so please unmute yourself, state your name and your address. I'll give folks another moment. Um, Seeing none, we will have an executive session um, and I'd ask that uh, a motion be made to go into executive session to include the town or the finance director. So move that we go into executive session, including finance director, Amy O'Toole. Is there a second? Selectman, Selectman Nordell will second. All in favor, Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Selectman D'Souza. Selectman D'Souza votes in the affirmative. Selectman Nordell. Aye. We are in executive session at 8.49 p.m. Um, Peg, I'm not sure if there will be uh, action or not. I, I imagine there will, but um, we'll check back with the recording as soon as I can get it up. Okay. Thank you. Good night. It's 9.05, we're out of executive session. Uh, is there any further business to come before the board? I think we need to take up agenda item 9F. Selectman so Nordell would move that we approve the contract between the town of East Windsor and the finance director 
and authorize the first selectman to sign and approve it. Is there a second? Rory DeSouza will second that. Any discussion? I would say that uh, Amy is an integral part of our team. We appreciate having her on board and we look forward to working with her for another few years. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman DeSouza. Aye. Selectman Nordahl. Aye. The contract is approved. I will execute that with her tomorrow. Um, I'm going to ask that we move to postpone um, agenda item 9E. Um, and that'll probably be for a couple of meetings. So if we could just have a, a motion to postpone, that would be great. Selectman Nordell would move to postpone business uh, 9E or agenda item 9E, Broadbrook Fire Memorandum of Understanding um, until it's been finalized between the commission and the board of selectmen. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. I have no further business to come before the board. Um, unless anyone else does, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Is there a second? second. It's non-debatable. Motion has been made and seconded. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. We are adjourned at 9.08 p.m. Thank you all very much. Have a great day.